Uh, my desire and the EC has uh, agreed with this is to continue, continue as a full-time pastor here at FBCG for at least five more years. Maybe longer if God leads, but at least five more years full-time, but in a different capacity. My role will be called something like, haven't quite finalized it yet, but pastor of leadership and development here at FBCG. And Jeff will become, pending approval, senior pastor of FBCG. Um, we envision this role as enabling me to uh, continue to preach and teach and use my strongest gifts, as well as investing my time and experience and continuing to build the impact of FPCG in our community and the world. My role will include the following, preaching and teaching, just like I've always done, just like I'm doing now. Uh, secondly, leadership development. Talked a little bit about that already. I have a kind of a growing passion for identifying and, and uh, building young leaders. Thirdly, a unique area that we're just simply calling right now organizational development. Uh, I believe, I'm talking about this just for a minute, but I won't spend too much time on it because it's brand new. Uh, I believe for a long time that God has called FBCG to extraordinary local and global impact. I think that's why I ticked off all those things at the beginning of the meeting today. God is doing some things through our church. Uh, he's doing some new things through our church. And there's more things to come. Uh, I believe we're poised for a season of impact right now. Uh, Jeff and I, along with the entire senior management team, which is myself, Jeff, Bruce McAvoy, and Doug Kite, and the executive council, believe that part of that impact is going to be leadership development. Part of it's going to be uh, our local and global partners through Serve the World. Uh, part of it's going to be expanding our vision for reaching the neighborhoods of Kane County, this, this tri-city region. And part of it, I believe, is going to be deepening and strengthening our reservoir of resources. I've long believed that a church like FPCG should have, for lack of a better word, a kind of endowment for ministry, like a college or university does. That is a way to gather resources outside of our annual operating budget that will allow the church to take, to take advantage of opportunities that come along for impact that we've not yet imagined. What will change mostly is internally with staff leadership. Uh, Jeff will take leadership of our ministry staff, he'll take the leadership of our senior management team, and he'll become the voting member of the executive council. Uh, I will, I will st still attend some meetings, and some meetings I won't attend anymore, just because he needs to be in that seat and people can't be looking to me when he, they should be looking to him. So internally, those changes will happen the quickest. Externally, publicly, there won't be much feel of change really at all. In terms of Jeff's role, we aren't going to replace immediately Jeff as pastor of, uh, of adult discipleship. He's got some competent people in there, and those, those, um, we're going to allow that to, to go forward for a, for a year or so. But eventually we will hire. Eventually we will hire someone in that role. But we want to pause for a while because there are some visionary things we're going to be talking about over the next couple of months that will tell us what kind of person we're going to look to fill that role. Uh, Pastor Bruce McAvoy has been here for 19 years or so, and for the last, how many years has it been since you've worn out these hats? Six or seven? Eight more than that? Six or seven years, he's worn both the hat of pastor of family, fa pastor of family and serving. So he's really led two really large departments, and as, as the service side, serve the world, local serving, has grown in staffing and dollars raised and all that, Bruce has done an extraordinary job spinning an extraordinary number of plates, and it's all behind the scenes. Because you don't see him up front here, it's all behind the scenes. But uh, Bruce has decided and agreed with our looking at the whole thing to move full time into uh, the serving mission, serve the world arm of our church's impact. We haven't come up with a title yet, but it'll be something like Pastor of Impact Ministries. And so that whole division, from our global, uh, our global partners to our local partners to our staff in that area Shepherd's to serve heart. the world, Shepherd's heart. Shepherd's heart to our global, uh, what we call global staff, all the missionaries that are out there serving. You know, we have almost 30 missionaries who grew up here who are serving around the world. Bruce keeps in contact with all of them, so that will become his role. And so that creates the next domino, which is we need a leader for family, student, and children's ministries, and uh, we are going to move Sterling Moore from his current role as Trek High School pastor into that role. And then that creates a hole behind Sterling to lead Trek High School. And we've made an offer to a, a young man we've known for three or four years, which he just recently accepted. He'll join us in May to join our team as a co-director of Trek High School Ministries. So we're, those are the three 
buckets, three seats we're filling first that we can handle and our budgeting and all that. We were approached by uh, actually two churches in our region, one in our local region, seeking out us for the possibility of some sort of merger. It was a church that was struggling mightily and they were coming to us uh, for some sort of help. And this initiated the process for us that made us go, hmm, we need to really rethink what we're doing here at West Campus and why and what God has for us. I'll let Jeff talk a little bit about that yeah. process there. Just, just yeah. words I do. So when, when, the, when the letter went out from Brian uh, last summer uh, that, that, uh, in the executive council about the transition, and people began to hear about this, they would invariably ask me, well, what's your vision for our church? And I didn't know how to answer that other than to say, more of the same? I like what we're doing. I wasn't clear if I had something different, I didn't know. And, and sometimes, uh, if I'm honest, I think I felt insecure about that. Maybe I should have some grand, different vision. Um, when this church that approached us asked this question, I think all of us on the senior management team initially thought, we don't really see that. We don't have a plan to become like a, a massive campusing thing all over the Chicagoland area. That's not us. We don't know. So we said no. Right? I mean, right. Um, then we went away to Lake Geneva, the four, the four of us, to pray and plan for some this other things. This is last things. summer. Last summer, summer of 2015. Sorry, to pray and plan for some other things. And I, independently, we each said, you know what? Maybe God is doing something that we should pay attention to that we don't yet see. Maybe there's something in this request that we don't yet see. We should revisit it. But we're not smart enough to figure it out on our own. And so we brought in a consultant. Uh, his name's Jim Tomberlin. He's sort of the multi-site church expert in the country, uh, but I, I knew of him. And we just brought him in to observe our church and ask us questions and lead us through a process. After the Saturday night service, we're out to dinner, and uh, uh, Brian and Doug and Jim and Tomlin and I, and just in the course of conversation, he used a phrase, neighborhood church. He said, perhaps you should see yourselves in more of a neighborhood church model. And we just read it. Something in my spirit stirred me, said that, neighborhood church. Oh, what is that? I texted Brian on the way home. I stayed up half the night thinking about it. I don't can't tell you in detail what that means right now, but here's the thing. Do we really expect more and more people to drive from farther and farther away to a larger and larger box at the West or East Campus? Is that really the way we're going to make the greatest impact? I think perhaps no. Perhaps God is calling us. You know, you, 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 many of you drive from 10, 15 minutes out, right? You drive through neighborhoods. You don't know anybody there. To this church, you know, a few people here, you go back to your neighborhood, you drive in your garage, you close the door, you go in your backyard, which is fenced. You don't see your neighbor. I think every Christian, every Christ follower should be a great gift to their street and neighborhood, and every church should be a gift to its neighborhood and community. And I think we are, as a church, growing in that way. We already have two neighborhood communities. The way we already are that, sort of accidentally, you know. Perhaps God is calling us to think about the long-term vision is not build a massive thing, but reproduce the healthy, exciting, gospel-driven DNA of our church in neighborhood communities. We want to make sure we're wise with the stewards of resources, both human capital and financial capital, and make sure that, 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 that it's the impact that the God wants us to have at this point in time. So all to say to you right now is that we are in the process of reconsidering that. And as each of these church family meetings goes forward, we're going to give you more information as we know it about, about what we think might or might not be coming in that area.